Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. On the agenda tonight we have James Burton and he's going to be playing with Elvis and it's going to be an old recording of Elvis. What they did was they took a live vocal from an Elvis show many years ago and then applied it to the live band setting. So the band are all playing live and they've got Elvis's vocal that's been put into the mix. So this is actually really cool because the band has to be absolutely absolutely spot on to Elvis's vocal that has been pre-recorded so it's impressive in many ways but let's get into this and get James up on screen and see how him and Elvis get on. I'm just going to jump in here because this sound and James' guitar sound is pretty much the sound of a generation when you listen to old Elvis stuff and in the 60s and, well, late 50s and 60s and going into the 70s. It's that whole rock and roll sound and James is tone and the way that he plays is really unique because of course if you're playing with Elvis you've got to know your stuff you've got to be able to play exactly what is required in that backing band but the reason that I say that his sound was unique was because James actually used banjo strings on his guitar and I think this is around maybe the late 50s something like that because he heard a lot of blues stuff on the radio and he heard that players were sliding a lot and doing lots of bends and he couldn't understand how they were doing it because he had really heavy gauge strings on his guitar. So he decided to use banjo strings as the top strings on his guitar. So the E, the B, the G and the D. So what he did for the rest of the strings in order to make it sound a little bit more even was he moved the D string to where the A string was and the A string to where the E string was. So effectively on his guitar his lowest string was the normal A string but of course he's tuning it up to standard tuning which meant that when he was using these banjo strings he could do bends and slides and he could do everything so much more easily but the problem that he had when he was restringing his guitar using banjo strings is that they didn't have that solid bit at the end that stops it coming through the bridge so when you tighten it up and tune it it then doesn't come flying out of the guitar so the banjo string didn't have that so he had to I guess he had to weld that onto every string to make sure that it wouldn't come through the guitar so it would have been a bit of a pain in order to have to do that for all of those strings, those top four strings, but this certainly would have given James a unique sound when compared with all the other players who were using heavy gauge strings. And by the way, I think so many guitarists owe so much to James because Ernie Ball was really interested in James's sound and the strings that he used and how he strung his guitar. So they met up and James Burton just explained exactly what he did with his guitar, the fact that he used lighter gauge strings. And Ernie Ball then took that and ran with it and started to develop strings that were different gauges. So now we've got that ability to play with a nine gauge at the top on that high E string. And this is all from James Burton. So without James Burton's innovation and just thinking outside the box, 
Ernie Ball wouldn't have had that same idea, that light bulb that goes off that thinks, hang on, I can make strings of different gauges so that you can string your guitar with exactly the thickness you want. There's nothing worse than not being able to do something just purely because of your physiology. You can't do it because you haven't got the right size hands. Whereas James just found a way around that. And now everyone across the world can get gauge strings that are the best for their own playing style and their own physiology. And just a quick word on James's playing and the video as well, the fact that it's been cut together with the old footage and then we get to see the new footage. So if you suddenly see that James has aged quite a lot, it's just those two cuts coming together. James's playing is absolutely all over it and it's what you expect from a guy that's this good and has played with such great bands and so many different artists as well. And he was part of the Wrecking Crew, so look that up. Back in the day, they were on so many hits. But that technique that he's got, obviously he's all over it with the bends, but he did a lot of flat picking, but also hybrid picking as well. That hybrid picking was, I think, what he first started with. That was his kind of technique. That was his style that he liked to play. So he was holding that pick between the first finger and the thumb, and then using that second finger to then play even that chicken picking style that you hear in country music is great for that kind of thing and following on notes quickly after picking an initial note. So that was his go-to sound, or at least that's how he learned to play and how he could throw these lines together and get a unique sound to it as well. But let's just check out the rest of the track. <laughs> The solos are live. When you see the show yeah, live, the, the, the solos, solos are live. Yeah. Yeah. And how do you get back on track then? I listen to it. I yeah. have to listen. For him to do a drum solo like he does, because he's not listening for the track and hoping it's correct. He just goes straight on. And every time he makes it, I applaud. All right? You've made it every time so far. So far. And there we go. And I haven't done a video yet that's just been Elvis in isolation, but I know that Elvis did play a little bit of acoustic guitar, so maybe I'll do that one in the future. But having a little look at James's playing, but also the whole band here, and just quickly to explain about that drum solo, you probably got it from what they were saying, but because there's no guide, because it's just the Elvis vocal is what they're basing everything on and playing live to it, it means that on that drum solo, there is no guide. So he's got to just hope that he's counted exactly the right amount of bars to then come back in and the bars that he's got in his head just absolutely conform to what the bars were back in the day for then when Elvis comes back in and like they said, he's nailed it every time. So the whole performance here from the band is absolutely spot on considering that they're actually playing to a live vocal that isn't actually live, it's all pre-recorded and they've got to adjust their playing to be in time with that. Just a quick word on James's guitar. You could see in the old footage there, he had a pink Fender Telecaster or Tele as they're called. And he wasn't sure whether Elvis would actually like that guitar, but he did. So then he could use it live playing with Elvis. But then in the more recent footage, you can see that he's using his signature model of Tele. So the difference with the signature model is that he's got three pickups in there. The original Telecaster only had two pickups. So it means that James 
James has got a little bit more of an option tonally on his own signature model and he's got that five-way pickup switch um, you'll know if you play guitar what that is but it basically just gives you more tonal options to now have a combination of three pickups rather than just being stuck with a combination of two. James has worked with so many people and it doesn't get much bigger than Elvis Presley but he's also worked with Glenn Campbell and Johnny Cash, the Everly Brothers, Susie Quattro I think is in there as well but you can go on Wikipedia and check out all the people that he's worked with if you're interested in finding out. He's also in the Nashville Musicians Hall of Fame and Museum and that's for being part of the Wrecking Crew like I mentioned earlier. So an absolute legend but a legend in the background here because James did so much work behind the scenes, behind the stars like Elvis just who really got all the attention but he was really one of those cogs in the background that kept that machine running. But thank you so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at. Keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!